Hey, biology students. Like I told you at our Google Meet session, we're going to have a short chapter in chapter 17. I've cut some of it out, and I, I do that every year, not just because we're doing online course right now, but because um, I just cover the basics on classification. And so it's going to be maybe a 10 to 15 minute video here. So let's go ahead and get started looking at notes. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do it this way with my um, uh, YouTube video here and, and my little laptop just so that we can make it a little bit easier because some of the other ways I've done it, the video always did not um, work well with Schoology. So chapter 17, um, we start off with just defining classification, grouping things together. Um, we like to, as human beings, put things in groups, and uh, biology is, is um, not an exception to that. Scientists uh, like to group living things together. The first scientist who kind of um, grouped things was Aristotle, and he grouped animals um, as red blood or bloodless, and then he p plants, he just kind of put them together by how big they were, their size, their structure. Linnaeus, this guy right here, um, he was the first person who really grouped things and gave them scientific names. He did this in the 1700s. <clears throat> the branch of science he developed is called taxonomy. And the system of naming things with two names is called binomial nomenclature. And so that's whenever something has a, um, a genus and a species name and the names are based on Latin and, root, and Greek root words. Um, that is a scientific naming system called binomial nomenclature. Uh, there are different categories that we put a living organism in when we name it, classify it. Um, each category is called a taxa or, or taxon, excuse me, plural is taxa. And we're going to go through the levels, the different categories. We always begin with the domain. That's the biggest category. Something is put in one of three domains, and then those domains contain kingdoms, and the kingdoms contain phyla, which is plural for phylum. The phyla contain classes. The class contains orders. Orders contain families. Families, uh, we have a little bit more of a term here, definition, have similar genre, that's plural for um, genus. And our example here is that you could have all these bears, brown bears, polar bears, and grizzly bears. They're all in the same family. And then a genus, plural genre, is a group of organisms that are closely related and have a common ancestor. And the last one, species, we defined this in an earlier chapter. It's um, animals that, that are able to um, breed and produce offspring. Okay. So, they go in this order. And a lot of people remember the order by, by this little saying, Did King Philip come over from Greece Saturday? Or some people like to remember, Did King Philip come over for Great spaghetti. Okay. It doesn't matter which, or you can come up with your own. Just to remember that they go in this order um, when you go to classify something. And you will be asked about, you know, to be given these different taxa and, the, and put them in the right order. You'll have to do that on the chapter test, which will be on Monday. Okay, we're going to cover the domains. There are three of them, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Um, I covered these with, with seventh grade when I teach the uh, life science to those students. And so if you were in seventh grade in my class, we went through this. You now, you should remember them when we go cover them in a minute. There are six kingdoms within those three domains. And the... Organism is put into a domain depending on what type of cell it has 
and its structure, whether it's eukaryotic or prokaryotic. <clears throat> okay, so let's cover the first domain, domain bacteria. So bacteria obviously are in this domain. And the kingdom, there's only one kingdom in this, and it's called eubacteria. And of course, these are prokaryotic cells. They're single-celled organisms. They don't have a nucleus. They don't have membrane-bound organelles. And the cell walls are made out of something called peptidoglycan, which is um, a couple of different sugars joined together. Archaea is the next domain. These are also prokaryotes. Um, the kingdom is kingdom archaea. Uh, they are very primitive, um, even more so than bacteria. Their cell walls do not have peptidoglycan in it. Um, and they actually live in some really weird places or extreme environments. And so they're called... For short, archaea are called extremophiles. That's a good thing to remember, by the way. Hint, hint. They are found in extreme places like hot springs, salty lakes, ocean vents, swamps. Some of them like methane gas, and they grow in swamps where there's a lot of methane gas. So that's the archaea. That's how you pronounce that, archaea. Domain eukarya, it's the biggest one. It's got all the rest of the kingdoms in it. These are cells that have a nucleus. They have membranes around their organelles. Remember eukaryotic versus prokaryotic? Eukaryotic cells are found in organisms um, in the kingdoms protista or protist, fungi, plural for fungus, Plantae, plantae, excuse me, Latin for plants, animalia, animals. Okay, so those are four, the four kingdoms that make up the domain eukarya. Let's look at the protists first. Kingdom protista. They're eukaryotic. They can be single-celled, unicellular. Um, is the same thing as single cell. That means the same thing. They could grow in colonies, or they could be multicellular. Some protists are, uh, no, well, no, no protists are, have organs. They're all very simple. But some of them are kind of like plants. They go through photosynthesis, and that includes algae. Um, and there is some algae right here. Um, algae make their own food. They go through photosynthesis. Other protists are like animals. They are consumers. They don't make their own food. Amoeba, euglenas, paramecium are examples. I've got a picture of amoebas right here. And then the last category of the protists are the fungus-like. Um, so they're like the fungus kingdom. And they include slime molds and mildews. And um, there's a slime mold. They like to grow in the woods on moist rotting logs and things like that um, and they come in different colors and they look slimy they really do so they get the name slime molds the next domain in the eukarya is the kingdom fungi mushrooms yeast molds um fungi is plural for fungus some of them are unicellular. A lot of them are multicellular. The unicellular one is yeast. Um, they do not make their own food. They don't go through photosynthesis. They, a lot of them are decomposers. And so they get or absorb um, organic material from their environment. There's some mushrooms right there. They can't move. They can't get up and walk around. They have cell walls. But their cell walls are made of something called chitin. That's how you pronounce that. And they also are known for these little thread-like filaments called hyphae. And if you've ever pulled a mushroom up out of the ground, you may have seen those little filaments. And then, of course, we said they include mushrooms, yeast, and molds. Lichens are really unique. Here's a picture. If you can see that, kind of... Up close, those they come in different colors. They are 
not really in a kingdom. They are made of fungi and algae living together in a symbiotic relationship. The fungi provide a habitat and the algae provide the food because they go through photosynthesis. So they are mutualistic. They help each other out. That's what type of symbiotic relationship they have. Next in the domain Eukarya are plants. Kingdom plantae. All plants are multicellular. They have cell walls made of cellulose. Most of them have chloroplasts to help them go through photosynthesis. They have tissues, which include roots and stems and, and leaves, and, that, and those are actually organs. And the last domain in the eukarya are the animals, animalia, kingdom animalia. All animals are multicellular. They're all heterotrophs. They're all consumers. They can't make their own food. They do not have cell walls. They are more complex in that they have tissues, organs, and organ systems. We're getting there. Most of them can move. Modal means, modal means you could say mobile. Most can move. Last slide, and we're done with chapter 17. Look, viruses. Now, that looks like the, a lot like the COVID-19 virus because it's in the same family. That's actually a flu virus. Um, viruses are not considered to be alive. And you will be asked this as a question on your test. They're not alive all by themselves. So they're not living. They're not in a kingdom or domain. They're not, they're not classified that like that. They're, they're just non-living particles because they're not even cells. They're, they don't have a nucleus and all the cell organelles that we're used to. So they're not cells. And they cannot reproduce without a host. So that's why they're not alive because of these two right here. If you're asked this question, and you will be, the two reasons why viruses aren't alive, they're not made of cells, and they can't reproduce without a host. And they just kind of stick them in at the end of this um, uh, chapter. So that is all the notes from chapter 17. And I've kept it at under 15 minutes. That's good. Um, so I encourage you to read this in the textbook as well. And um, we're going to do a, a handout uh, to reinforce this and a review. And then on Monday, we're going to have a test on Chapter 17. Y'all keep um, taking care of yourselves. Stay well. Hang in there. And I will be talking to you again soon. Bye-bye.